So today we're going to talk about ways you can delight your patients and provide value. So the number one thing I want everybody to think about is all of the topics and suggestions we're going to make today is really all about how can you be amazing. And the reason why this matters is because people are going to talk about it when you are amazing. So last week I opened up my Facebook feed and I saw this in there. 16 hours after this was posted, there were already 45 recommendations for local family dentists. And the one that stood out to me, and I'm sure will stand out to you, is one that talks about a dental practice that is amazing. Just highlight a few things in case you can't see it. I used to go to another dentist, but I felt like a number there. I switched to this new one, and the team is amazing. They got me an appointment the same week, take all types of insurance, and go above and beyond. Instead of just telling me what I need to have done, they sat down with me, brought up on screen a picture of my teeth with the highlighted areas that needed some attention. It was kind and helpful and made sure I had a great experience. I will never go anywhere else. This is amazing service. But what you see when you read through it is the things that they did, they're not that difficult. They're things that you guys are probably doing as part of your practice, but the complete presentation of everything was enough to make this person say, it's an amazing dentist. It's a great experience. I'm never going anywhere else. So let's talk about a few ways that you can actually delight your patients. Let's start talking about having a good, incredible online reputation. So what's involved in having an incredible online reputation? It's pretty simple. It's listening and it's responding. Usually when we talk about review sites, we talk about how it's great for bringing in new patients, having people find you online, but it's also really great for connecting with your patients and delighting them. People go to online sites because they want to be heard. They want to leave a review. They want people to read them. They want the company that they're reviewing to hear them. So use this to your advantage. Always respond to online reviews, whether it's a positive one or if it's a negative one. If it's a positive, thank them. Thank them for their kind words. Thank them for coming in and being a loyal patient. If it's negative, this is an opportunity for you to acknowledge them and then see if there's a situation you can correct. And this benefits you in a couple of ways because if you are able to show that you are a practice that cares and is willing to correct a situation, not even that one person that you're talking to, but the other hundreds, if not thousands who are read, reading this know that you care. So it's a really important thing to do and read what they're talking about and actually take it to heart. It gives you a chance to correct a bad situation. It also gives you a way to understand what doesn't work. So statistic, for every unhappy patient that complains, 26 say nothing. So if you have one negative review, you know, maybe it was a person with a bad day. But if you have two or three that are always referencing the same thing, you know, maybe it's they need a new coat of paint or I have a tough time with a particular person in the office. Think of these as ways to understand what people are experiencing and go and try to fix them. Try to turn this disappointing experience into an amazing one, especially because the cost to replace a disappointed patient is significantly higher than the cost to just keep somebody happy and keep all of their patients happy. So another thing that you can do is educate your patients. In a recent study, 73% of patients said a clear explanation of required services was a major factor in whether they would return to their dentist or not. Additionally, 33% of patients think their dentist tries to sell them unhappy services. Stop that. Um, it's important to educate your patients in a genuine, authoritative, authentic manner because that's going to give them the trust that what you're telling them is important. And education is a way that you can actually give value to your patients because you're going to give them information that they need to know, such as what should I be doing at home or what things are going to help me. And it's actually replacing them from having to go and look for that information elsewhere. So here's some ideas on how you can educate people before they even come into the office. On your website, you can have a blog, lots of different types of articles. 
You can show videos of different procedures, how to brush your teeth videos. Simple things like that are gonna make a big difference. You should have a description of the procedures, what people can expect. You should also offer some before and after images. You know, if you're talking about a specific service, people are gonna to wanna to know what's it actually gonna do for me. So you can share that information beforehand. Social media is also a great chance for you to highlight the services that you offer. Share those blog articles that you put on your website. And one of the things I love is when you invite people to send in questions. Ask me your toughest question and I'll share the answer with you. Because that's a great way to engage in two-way dialogue and show that you actually are listening to them. Then within the office, there's a lot of things you can do. Make sure you explain the procedure that's needed, what's actually involved, and what are the costs so that there's no surprises. Use images to illustrate what you're looking to do. If you're able to show them images of their own teeth and kind of explain where things are need a little bit of work, that's gonna be the most impactful. But if you can, find before or after images of others that can help to illustrate what it is that you're looking to do. You could also pull up videos and articles from your website if they're gonna help illustrate what it is that you're trying to educate the patient on. Or if you've recommended a procedure that they're not gonna be able to complete and they wanna think about it a little bit more before they decide, send them an email with a link so they can learn more about what it is that you're recommending. If you are looking to do some blogs, which is a great way to share information, here's a couple of sample titles that you can see are engaging with people, providing value, and helping to support and build the trust in you. So an example might be tips for getting your kids to floss. It's a great article that people can use at home. Doesn't necessarily promote you, but it helps to build you as somebody they trust. And on the right, we've actually got an example of what a blog could look like and how you can incorporate it into your website. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a link over here that shows the blog, and these are the articles that come up. So the next tactic you want to do to try to delight your patients is making sure you're communicating clearly. And the important thing to remember with this is that you need to communicate in the way your patients want to talk to you. A colleague had told me about a recent experience he had where he was looking for a dentist and he went and he did his research online, he found one he liked, he filled out a form on their website requesting an appointment. A week later, he didn't hear anything back. He ended up calling because that's the type of person he is and they had were able to schedule him and he asked. He said, I filled out a form on your website, but I never heard that. And the person on the other end said, oh, we never check those. I can't imagine how many patients they have lost because they're not checking those. Now, in his case, he's the type of generation that's willing to make a phone call, but a lot of people aren't. They only wanna communicate digitally. They wanna use email and text messages and websites. And where the practice went wrong is not only are they not communicating in that method that the person who is a potential patient wants to, but they actually showed that they might be willing to and then drop the ball by never even checking those. So make sure that you're communicating in the way your patients want to communicate. Now, it doesn't all have to be a lot of extra work though. There are some systems that offer communication automation. So it's gonna automatically send out emails or texts or postcards for you by connecting to your practice management system. It's just gonna save you a lot of time. You know, one of the things that we found in, in countless numbers of research that over 50% of patients want to have text message reminders. And that's one of those types of things that's very, very difficult to do if you don't have a system in place that's gonna do it. Nobody's gonna sit there on their phone and send out text messages to everybody in the office. So you can definitely save a lot of time by using automation. Another thing you can do with communication is reach patients outside of the normal hours. You shouldn't only be reaching out to remind them of their visit. It's common to send the reminders out, but if you send out a happy birthday reminder or hey, your benefits might expire soon, make sure you take advantage of them reminders, those kind of things help to build a relationship. It helps to connect you with that patient outside. And it, that's part of what's gonna delight them, knowing that you know it's their birthday and you care enough to send them a birthday card. Those make a big impact. 
The next couple of things you want to do to make sure you delight your patients is make sure you're available and you're flexible. Oh, sorry. Uh, so being available and flexible, you want to make sure that if they're looking for you, they can find you online. There's nothing worse than looking for a practice and not being able to find a reliable source of their business information. A lot of cases, people may not have their own website, but you can get reliable information from Google or things like that. If you don't have anything, then people are going to question whether you're actually competent and trustworthy. So make sure you claim your business listings on Google and Bing. Claim any social media listings, even if it's just putting in the basic information. And then have a website with clear contact information. The next thing I want to do is make sure that you're available. When people start to look for a dentist, they're not planning months in advance. Yeah, maybe they don't need to be, um, they just had an appointment, something like that. But if they're looking, they need to see somebody right away or within a week or two. They don't plan months in advance. So make sure that you're able to accommodate for some of those people. The other thing you want to watch for is flexibility. Nowadays, a lot of people have a very busy work life. And if you're able to bring them in on evenings or weekends, that might actually help you if you're having a tough time filling your appointment books. It makes you look like somebody who's caring more about their needs and is willing to work with somebody. And the thing I want to make sure you really remember is try as hard as you can to be on time. If you are always late to your visits with people, they're going to start to get really disappointed. They're going to start to think about finding another dentist, and it's costly to try to replace them. So try as hard as you can be to be on time for people. If you find that you're consistently late, you might want to rethink the time frame you're using to schedule people. So finally, how do you make your patients feel special? Well, we've got a few more ways here, uh, definitely more than the five ways we told you up front. So let's walk through. So just make them feel special by doing a little extra personalization at different visits. One thing people sometimes do is have patient appreciation days. It's a surprise and delight where one random day each month, maybe you give out extra goodies, have some extra samples, you could provide healthy snacks or drinks at the end of the appointment. It's just a way to say a little bit more, hey, we really appreciate you, we're really excited. And it's something that people in the office can get excited about too. You could also make your patients feel welcome by including a welcome sign when they come in next to their chair or on the screen in the treatment room. Thank people verbally before they leave, you know, before they go. Just thank you for coming. We really appreciate you. We're looking forward to seeing you in six months. Just let them know that you appreciate them. That goes a long way. And one of the other things that I've seen is sometimes dentists call patients after the procedures in the evening. How did it go? Did you have any questions for me? Are there any issues? That's a personal touch that will always be remembered, especially when it's after hours in the evening because that's when people aren't expecting it. It's a surprise. It's a delight. Another thing you can do is make sure that you help to alleviate some of the anxiety people have about going to the dentist. Have a nice, warm, inviting mood. Soothing music, maybe some aromatherapy, comfortable furniture. Don't just buy the cheapest chairs that you can find at Costco. Get some nice furniture. You want to visually think about elements that are going to help relax people. Maybe it's a waterfall in the lobby, nice landscape photography, soothing colors throughout. And another thing we recommend is think about the children who come into your practice if you're a family practice. Maybe you can have a play area in the lobby or handheld video games during treatments. Um, maybe that bright light that's shining, little kids don't like that. It makes them very uncomfortable. You can get a cheap pair of sunglasses in bulk that you can hand out to little kids when they come in to put on when you start to do their cleaning. Little things like that make a difference. I can remember my children being excited to go to the dentist because they wanted to play with the toys there. And then lastly, there's a few other ideas we have. You can give a small gift card if a patient's left waiting too long to turn that feeling of frustration into a pleasant surprise. You know, if somebody's sitting there for 20 or 30 minutes, just acknowledging that they've been there longer than they should have and that you're not 
that's not your standard, that you don't like doing that to them and offering them, you know, $5 gift card to Starbucks, and that's going to go a long way. You can also offer free services or gift cards on birthdays or special occasions. Uh, for example, if you have a patient who's been with you for years and years and they're getting married, maybe it's an opportunity to offer something related to tooth whitening. And then another thing is don't forget to reward loyalty if people are referring you. So if we think back to the beginning where we've got that um, recommendation request and 45 people said something, if you have a page in Facebook that they were able to tag, you can easily see who's recommended you. And you can go back and even if it's just a thank you card in the mail that says, hey, thanks for sending over the referral, we really appreciate it. That's gonna go a long way. People are gonna remember and they're gonna be more likely to do it again. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Um, ProSites and Practice Mojo, we offer online marketing, websites, automation, lots of different tools that can help you out. We've got a lot of current specials going right now. So if you wanna learn more, feel free to reach out to us um, either online or give us a call. And I wanna thank you for joining us today.